As a child or as an adult, did you ever read Dr. Seuss stories? I did. And I often think back as to how the simplest stories sometimes carry the greatest truths. In the Dr. Seuss story, Horton Hears a Who, Horton the elephant is bathing one day and he hears some cries. Horton quickly realizes that those cries are coming from a speck of dust and the world of the Who's. Well, Horton rescues that speck of dust by placing it on a small flower. Horton's community doesn't believe that the smallest of flowers holds any significance in the greater scheme of things, so the community members set out to destroy the flower, to teach Horton a lesson, and to prove that this small flower didn't really matter. Well, in a panic, Horton convinces the Who's to yell at the top of their little lungs so everyone might hear them. So the Who's yell and scream and clang cymbals and beat drums, and still Horton's community doesn't hear them. Well, finally, the Who's realize that there's one small little Who who isn't yelling. So they grab this little who and they take him out with everybody else. And this littlest of the who's yells out a little yup. And suddenly Horton's community hears. They stop and they realize how close they really came to destroying a microcosm of life. Their destructive ways were stopped by one of the smallest of beings. As we celebrated Earth Day this week, I hope it gave you pause. Did you stop and thank God for this planet that provides us with our very existence? Like the psalmist, do you ever ponder and gaze upward, wondering how small we and our planet are. Do you marvel how God could create such tiny things as an atom, yet also create a universe? The earth, the sky, and the universe are inextricably linked to each other and to us. Did you know that the human body shares common elements with the earth and the air? We do. We share common elements of oxygen, nitrogen, and calcium. But there's more. There's an astrophysicist named Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he helps us understand how we as humans connect to the universe when he writes this. The atoms of our body are traceable to the stars that manufactured them in their cores and exploded these enriched ingredients across our galaxy billions of years ago. For this reason, we are biologically connected to every other living thing in this world. We are chemically connected to the molecules on Earth, We are anatomically connected to the atoms in the universe. We are figuratively, we are not figuratively, but literally stardust. Those are some pretty powerful words that we are biologically connected to everything. Humans are the most diverse and adaptive species on this planet. Does that not give us greater responsibility to care for it and its inhabitants? I believe it does, but so does the disciples' faith. 
Did you know that the disciples began eco-justice ministries back in the 1970s? We did. That's when the General Assembly first called for a resolution to develop a task force on ecology. And as the years have progressed, the disciples' programs were created, such as Return to the Garden. The disciples also created a green church program, which is now known as the Green Chalice Certification Program. It's an official ministry of the disciples' faith, and it's one that our congregation is proud to be part of. So this environmental thing sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But is it important? Absolutely. It is up to us to care for this planet. It is up to us to find ways to tread more gently, to harness energy without causing harm, to look at others and ourselves and say, this is home. This is all we have. And it is up to me to do my part to ensure that it is here for millennia, for millennia to come. But how easy can that be? Saving the whole world? My father once told me that no one person can save an entire anything, but we can save the corner of the world that we touch. So, what corners of the world do you touch? What can you do to make a difference on our little speck of dust that's floating through the universe? Over the next few weeks, as you read your newsletter, you'll be seeing some suggestions of small, easy steps that you can take. I hope you'll try at least a few of them. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. My friends, we, the inhabitants of this earth, are God's beloved. The plants, the two-legged, the four-legged, the no-legged creatures are God's creations. The air we breathe, the water that sustains us, are all part of our only home. It is up to us to make our stand as disciples, Christians, and humans to ensure that this earth this treasure that God has given us is utilized properly. It is up to us to ensure that we leave to those who will follow us a healthy, diverse, and beautiful gift of this blue dot. Your actions, they may be large, they may be small, and that's okay. Remember, we are all connected, and the smallest yap or the smallest action can make a very big difference.